Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. This is the second in our series on drawer making. In this episode, we are going to cut the joints and assemble the drawer. If that's something you're interested in, stay with us. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell, which will alert you whenever we release a new video. Anytime we use a new tool or technique, we'll leave a description down below so that make it easier for you to find. All right, let's get back to work. In our first episode, we went through and we milled and fit all the parts, sides, front, and the back. Now, if you haven't seen that, I suggest you go back and watch it. We'll leave a link below. In this episode, we're going to go through and we're going to execute three different types of joints. This first one on the front is what we call a half blind. You see half of the joint, you see the ends of the pins on this side, but you don't see anything from the front. On the back, we have what are called through dovetails, where you see the ends of the pins and the ends of the tails. And we have a groove that we cut on three pieces, the two sides and the front, that we house the drawer bottom in. And that's actually crucial to keeping that drawer nice and stiff and preventing any racking. So, let's get at it. First thing I'm going to do is cut the groove for the drawer bottom. So I want to mark that carefully. And it's going to go on the inside bottom edge of the drawer side. I'm just checking to make sure we got the right one. That's top left, so it's going to go right here. Look at that in position as it sits in the drawer. We don't worry about the drawer back, and it's going to go on the inside bottom of the drawer front. Now there's lots of ways to do this. I shouldn't say lots of ways. There's a table saw. You could use a router. I prefer to use a small drawer bottom plane. I'm going to show you, tell you why. If you use a table saw, you want to use a rip blade because it'll give you a square bottom as opposed to a combination or a cross cut that's going to have those ears. The problem is on a table saw that you're cutting at the top of the circle because you're coming, cutting only so deep, which means the table saw blade is wanting to push it up. So you really have to apply pressure right over top of the blade to prevent any uh, material being left on the bottom and not having the groove uniform depth front to back. So that's one issue, and it's a table saw and it's noisy, but so what? The other option is to use a router. So you put, we're gonna use a quarter inch groove, so you'd have a quarter inch router bit in there, set up your fence. Best to have the router actually in, in a router table and you drop it down, run it through, and bring it out. And that's fine, it'll do a good job. However, it's noisy, and it's, uh, you're fighting a rotating cutting action, which means you gotta keep it firmly against the table and whatever, it has its good points and bad. What I like about this, now I just set up a test cut. The way this works, it gives you a uniform depth all the way. It'll cut until it bottoms out. And when I say bottoms out, this is what I mean. Now, you'll notice that I put a little spacer in here because I didn't want it as deep as this plane was designed to do because my drawer side, I don't want to go halfway. I don't, I, in fact, I barely only want to go about a third of the distance. It's all I need to hold a solid bottom in and it still maintains enough material here that I don't create a really weak link on the drawer, which would be that narrow little piece left on the back side of the drawer. So if I actually draw this in, if we're gonna cut the groove right here, by the way, my plane is designed to cut three to an inch up from the bottom, which is another nice thing that it does. So it guarantees that the position of the groove is gonna be the same on all three pieces. If I cut this groove too deep, if I'm way down in here, after it's put together, that's all I have holding this piece of the drawer together, which creates a real weak link. So instead, I'm gonna be back up in here. I've actually got it set to cut about an eighth of an inch. Now, what I did is I just took a little piece of wood, a couple pieces of double-sided tape to hold it in place, and that will give me a little spacer, and when I'm done with it, I'll just pull it out. I've got the blade set so that it's not taking a real heavy cut, but heavy enough. Don't need to worry about the surface quality that it leaves, which is this area down in here. You're never gonna see it, so I want it to cut fairly quickly. As I mentioned, it's gonna cut three eighths of an inch up from the bottom, and the reason, one of the reasons why I cut the groove first is that it allows me when I'm laying out my dovetail to adjust the spacing so that I end up cutting 
in between the two pins. If we didn't, then you'd end up you'd end up cutting off part of your pin and it would show out there on the end of your joint. Don't want that to happen. You'll see as we go through and do the layout. So in order to do this, and sometimes you just end up fighting the grain because it only cuts in one direction. Meaning if I, if the grain is running this way, I can't turn it around and cut that direction. I have to cut against the grain. Hopefully it'll be with the grain with at least one of them. So I need to set this piece up. Again, checking to make sure I'm cutting in the right spot. I want just a little bit of the drawer hanging over. So in doing this, I've got to have lots of support up here so that this starts cutting on the proper plane. It'll engage, go all the way through, and I shift my weight so that up here, all my weight's at the front. Here, I'm pushing down on a 45 with both hands, and as I get toward the end, I back off and the pressure is here to prevent that from nose diving. And I'll take as many cuts. I usually don't bother pulling the plane up. And that's, a, that's a, a heavy cut, but as I said, when you're cutting a drawer bottom, you're not worried about the surface quality at the bottom of the groove, so you may as well get it done quickly. And I'll just go until it no longer picks up a shaving. And I know it's bottomed out. I'll check it a few times. So now that groove is the same depth front to back. really important that this groove line up on all three pieces so after you assemble the drawer and fit your bottom in it's it go fits in all three and you don't have to adjust one to compensate for a misaligned groove I'm pushing firmly with my left hand to keep that plane tight to the bottom edge of that drawer front so that groove stays three-eighths of an inch in. I'm going to lay these out and cut them one at a time and that'll give us a chance to explain anything that's unique to it. We're going to start with this front corner. This is our half blind. So the question is, well, why use a half blind? Sometimes I actually use a through dovetail. However, traditionally, you would use a half blind so that when that drawer is closed, you don't see any joint meaning you only see the ends of the pins when the drawer is open. Now, this, there's a few considerations in the layout. Number one is our end lap. This is the part of the drawer front that covers the ends of the tails, tails being the white part. Now, depending on the species of wood, that'll determine how thin you can make this. If it's too thin, you tap it like that, and you hear it's very fragile, and it's just, it just looks weak. If you leave too much material, and you've got that, those little wee short stubby tails. It looks machine made. And I don't like it at all. And as I look at this, I made this probably 10, 15 years ago. I'm thinking they were probably a little bit thinner than I would today. I, may, I might add a 30 second of an inch to that. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but sometimes a 30 second of an inch can really make a huge difference in the overall appearance. Not so much strength, but in the appearance. And that's one of my prime concerns. Second thing I want to consider is my, my uh, half pin on the end. I don't want that to be too small. I don't want, it to be too, don't want it to be too big. If it's too small, if it's half of what we're seeing right there, then it looks almost like a mistake. It looks very fragile. If it's too big, it looks really clumsy and throws the joint completely out of balance. Next consideration is how many tails, how many pins? Well, this joint is four and a half inches in width. So how many tails are we going to put in there? I would suggest that you could go three. Four is probably a little more appropriate. Five, you're getting too many. Let me explain my, my reasoning on that. The strength of a dovetail joint comes from the glue surface between long grain and long grain. This part of the tail board, this part of the pin board. So on each side of a tail, you get good effective glue surface. 
You don't get anything of value when it's touching the end grain of either the pin board or the tail board. So this is my only effective glue surface. So the more tails I have, the more glue surface I have, the stronger the joint's gonna be. However, there is a limit to that. Here it is. This piece of white wood is four and a half inches across the width. However, because we've had to remove parts of it in order to allow for these pins, we have reduced the strength of this piece of wood right along that baseline. By how much? Well, if you consider that from here to here is approximately three quarters of an inch, and we've got four of them, that's three inches. So our four and a half inch piece has been reduced in thickness down to three inches. And if we put in another pin, yes, we'll have more glue surface, but we'll actually be further weakening right along that baseline. So you have to balance that. You want strong joint, but you don't want to weaken it right there. So in that case, I'd say four or three, either one would be sufficient for the stress that this will be put under and the looks will be fine. So you can call that one. Last thing we need to do is when we lay this out, we are purposely going to leave the tails proud of the pins. So I'm going to set my marking gauge. Now this drawer has obviously already been done, but I'm going to go in there and I'm going to set my marking gauge. Oh, maybe like that. Actually, that's a little bit too much. I'd probably go a little bit less. I'd set my marking gauge to that thickness, leaving that much excess. That means when I assemble the joint, this will end up being proud and those pins will be sunk down in, both on the front and on the back. The reason we do this is so that once the drawer is fully assembled and dry, we can simply put this in, in place in the vise and start to plane the drawer side. And when we get down to the pins, we will have cleaned everything up but we have also will have sized the drawer because we already have fit that drawer back and that drawer front to the opening. So when we get down to them, then the side is going to match and with just a little bit of tweaking, it'll fit into that opening exactly the way we want. That's how we do, or the layout of the tails and pins on the front of the drawer. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And by the way, we did an entire video on half blinds. So the only exception to that video that I just explained is how we set our marking gauge to be a little bit less than the thickness of the drawer front. And by, I should also note that if you're going to uh, use our little rabbit for referencing, you'll see that in the video as well, then I would suggest that when you set your marking gauge, you set it out here at the end where the rabbit is so that you don't, because if you set it here, and you set it just a little bit less, and that little bit less happens to be the actual thickness of the piece out here where the rabbit is concerned, then you're not going to end up getting that excess side that you want in order to get the final fit. I'll show you as we do this. We've already got that groove cut for the drawer bottom, so this is the one part of the layout that is just a little bit different. I have to make sure that I keep that groove in between the two pins. Now this is going to be on the tailboard, but that means that I have to conceal all of this inside of a tail. So I'm gonna go on the back side. I've got my one and six slope. I wanna make sure that this, where the bottom of my tail is, is on my side of that groove. So I'm gonna come over here a little extra just to make sure. And I'll mark my line across the end. 
And then just while I got it in my hand, I'll flip it over here and lay out that side. Now, I'll come in, come in here and measure that. And then take that down the other end and mark that half pin. Now, I'm going to mark that just a little deeper so I can see it. Now we've got the front done, I'm going to show you how to do the back. I'm going to turn it this way so the camera can see it easier. And this is a simple way of doing it. We're not going to put as many and we're going to use through dovetails back here. And the question is, well, why use through dovetails? Well, there's no reason to hide either end of the joint. Through dovetail is fast, certainly just as strong, and it's actually easier to cut. So why not? Now. It's also going to be a little bit shorter because the back of the drawer is going to span from the top of the groove to slightly below the top of the side. The reason we make it slightly below, we don't want the back of the drawer dragging on the underside of the cabinet. So if we keep it below the side, that won't happen. So here's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to take that same setting that we had, which represented our half pin. I'm going to come in here, come down from the back and leave a little mark. And then I'm going to set that in there and do it again. And from the top of the groove, I'm going to come in here and leave a little mark. Now, on this first one, I'm going to have a plum cut. So I'll set my pen in the uh, hole, move the gauge over to it, square my line across the end. Oh, sorry, I forgot to, I forgot to uh, put it in our marking gauge line. And we can leave that same setting, I prefer to, same setting that we used to the front, no reason to change it, even though it's going to result in something a little bit different, but I like to do this, and I'll explain that when we get there. On this one, I scribe the face and the face. We don't do the top because that gets left alone, and we don't do the bottom. I'll put that back in there. So I'm going to run my perpendicular line from that mark up here. And over here, I'm going to run a perpendicular line that coincides with the top of the groove. So you got to have to eyeball that one. Now, if you want to do it while we're already here, I'm going to switch it around. Now I've got our six degree slope, or pardon me, our one and six slope. It's actually 10 degrees. Put the pen in the other hole. And we'll do the same thing up here. Now, I'm not going to put four tails here. I'm just going to put three. It's a little narrower. So starting here, this time I'm going to leave a mark, a little mark. Now when I get down here, I'm going to set the dividers on there and do the same thing. That'll give me three tails and two pins. So I'll come in here, put the pen in the hole, not the first one, but the second. I'm going to slope to my left, go to the second hole, square line. Slope goes to my left. So all the marks, all the spots with the X are going to be removed. Now, why did I leave a plum cut here? Well, let's explain this one first. This is going to be, the bottom is going to flit right underneath that. So we obviously couldn't cut down into here. We'd expose a gap. Up here, 
if we sloped it in that direction, it makes this last little bit of the side very thin. So instead, I make a perpendicular cut and maintain the thickness here. Our, we'll stop our, we will actually stop our drawer back somewhere right in around here, and we'll show you how to do that when we get there. But now, flip this around, and we'll go ahead and cut out those back through dovetails. So we've been forced to take a little detour. Jake just brought it to my attention that we made it had a major screw up on this. But we're already into this video series quite a ways and we don't want to back up and start over. So I'm going to show you how we're going to solve the problem. And if you build furniture, particularly one-offs, you're going to deal with issues where major design changes uh, get conf confront you because of something that went wrong. Sometimes it's a piece of wood that just doesn't do what you want, and sometimes it's you screwing up. So when I, did, I built this, this was a project that we did from a drawer making class, and I never was happy with the drawer knobs. Uh, the, the more I build furniture, the less I like drawer knobs, and the more I like to integrate some other part, whether it's just a little relief underneath or something, so you can leave the drawer fronts alone. Well, here's what we did wrong. You'll notice that that bottom part of the drawer front is designed to hang low and cover the drawer divider. Well, that means that the groove cut for the drawer bottom is not down here, it has to be up in here. I wanted to keep this series a uh, beginning drawer, so that complicates things because you have, the grooves, groove has to be cut a different way, but we've already done that. So now what we would have to do is either go in and fill that piece, that void, with a piece of walnut, but every time you open the drawer, you would tend to see that little square that's been filled. The other option was to go and get another piece of wood and start all over, but we already have the three drawer fronts picked out. So here's what we're going to do. Sitting here thinking about this, we already have this feature which is just a bull nose on both this piece and this piece. So, I haven't got this completely settled yet, but this isn't part of the video series, but I just wanted to show you what we're gonna do. What we'll do is we will cut that drawer front to fit, meaning take the bottom and move it up so that it's level or flush with the, the bottom of the sides, and we will add this piece somehow. I don't know how much we'll make it stick out, but that will close in there, that will cover the drawer bottom, and that will somehow be integrated to be the drawer pull. So you'll have this one, you'll have one underneath here, underneath there, right on down to the bottom, and that will be how we access the drawers. I don't know how much we're gonna have make it stick out. I would tend to wanna have it sticking out less than the one in the top, but somehow we'll, we'll do that, and that will save us where we are. So our next move is going to be go over to the table saw and cut this down to size, which is gonna be just a little bit taller than the drawer sides are, and we'll do the final fitting of the opening. You'll see that as well. But that will allow us to maintain the groove that we've cut, which coincides with the groove that we cut on the drawer sides. And it's also gonna make it easier to do our offset with the dovetail, which you'll see us do next. Okay, now we need our inside mark so that we know how deep to cut our pins. But what we're going to do is we're going to measure right out here where the rabbit has been cut. So instead of measuring back here, we come out here, we leave it a little bit less than the thickness. That's probably a 32nd of an inch less. You remember, whatever you do, or however amount you leave, that's what you're going to have to plane off. 
in cleaning up the drawer and getting ready for a final fit. So with that setting, this is on the inside of the drawer face, the only place we put this. And on the drawer back, we'll go uh, along the back, inside, and along the top. So when we're doing a half blind as it pertains to a drawer, we always want to reference off of the bottom. That's the, we've already used the bottom as a reference point for cutting the groove, so that is critical. The top may be a little bit off, but it doesn't matter. The bottom has to be right on. We want to keep the back, the drawer back, at full width until we're done this. If you're using my offset method for cutting your tails and pins, if this isn't left full width, it's going to be very difficult to do that offset. And I'll show you what I mean. So this goes currently, or in the state it is right now, this goes all the way to the bottom. Now, after we've done the dovetail, we're going to come in and we're going to cut that off so that that back ends right here so that the drawer bottom can slide underneath it and we'll address the top when the time comes. That means we can reference everything right off of this side. So with my offset sitting on top, I'll move that over and proceed as normal. Right side of each tail. No? Tail. Yeah. This yeah. is the tail. <clears throat>
did this, he would always leave the two outside half pins on while he was constructing because if you ever drop it, it always hits on the corner and then it munches and ruins that. So he'd take those off as the very last step. I'll do the same. Don't have to do anything to the front. Made sure everything is nice and clean. Make sure there isn't any loose debris like I just found sitting in there that will prevent that from closing properly. Now the back, we're gonna take that over to the table saw and trim that and we gotta do a little bit of work on the top. Uh, I did this one so we got to cut these. Now, this is really important. This joint right here at the top where it goes together, you've got to get that perfect. If you're not, you end up with a gap there, and it's the first thing you see when you open the drawer. So don't uh, be extre extremely careful on that one. So let me go ahead, and we'll process this. Also cut the chamfers. more. Chamfers cut, everything is clean. Now let's go over the table saw and trim this. I'm going to purposely leave a little bit of extra so I can go in there with the plane and bring it right to the side. That side, let me see if I can identify that a little better for you. So what we want to do is remove all the material on this side of that last pin. That's about a saw curve away. I'll flip it over and see what that's going to give me over here. That's a little too close, so I'll back that off. So I still have a little bit of the kerf left, so I know I didn't take too much off here. And I've got a little more than that on this side. So that means those two edges are not perfectly parallel, but I can take care of that with the plane. Okay, my wise cameraman just corrected me. That doesn't mean that the two sides aren't parallel. What it means is that that joint, that pin is not exactly in the same position in relation to this long edge on, on either end. So I've got to accommodate, or I've got to... Uh, allow for that. So I'll take some complete passes. Now what I'm looking at is I still have right there where I'm painting it red, that is the side of that pin that I want to keep. And back here, you can see it quite plainly. I'll just identify that with a little bit of red ink as well. But I've got more of a shoulder here than I do down here. Still have some. I'm going to back that off a little bit so we're not taking quite so much. We got to get right down to that or else it'll be too tight. This will be too tight 
in that opening. Okay, one pass. Back the blade off a little bit. No, too much. Okay. I'm going to leave it at that. Now I still got more to mat more material to remove here, so what I'll do is from about the halfway point, I'll make a pass. Then I'll back up a little bit more. Make a pass. Still have a ridge there. Back a little bit more. That's really close. I think I'll leave that right there. Okay, now the top, we have to determine how much we have to take off of there. So what I'm going to do is put that in position. Now I want to make sure that this surface is down below that chamfer that I cut. In other words, it'll show as a gap. So we've got to sit a little bit below. So we put that in position and that's actually plenty low. So what I'll do is just clean off the saw marks. I can still see some. Still some. I'm going to check and make sure I'm cutting a square. No, it's actually not quite. Slight adjustment. Okay, saw marks are gone. Now this is going to be the inside. And although your hand doesn't typically touch the back, it's just nice to have it eased a bit. Now, I had mentioned that I left my marking gauge the same thickness for the front. I used that same setting on the back. And what it ends up making or allowing for, or the result is that the tails end up coming out a little bit beyond the pins. And it's just an aesthetic thing. I just think it looks kind of neat to have that the way that ends up showing instead of it being flush. You can do whatever you want. But the last step I'm gonna suggest I'm just going to clean that up, get rid of the mill marks, get rid of the pen marks left over from when we laid out the joint. Now just in case you don't understand this process, we can plane the outside of a pin board and it doesn't affect the joint. If you plane the inside after you've cut the joint, that will affect how it fits. Just as an example, so this is going to go together like this. Changing the dimension of the piece from the top side down does nothing. But changing the dimension of the piece from the bottom side up means the width of this pin at the bottom is going to get narrower as we take more material off and we go farther up. That means it would become loose fit in the joint. So that always has to be done before you cut your pins. And this is ready to assemble. So we want everything we're going to need. I get all the pieces the way they're going to be. So we don't make any mistakes that way. I'm sitting here looking at it, wondering what I'm looking at. That goes like that. Okay, I've got my spatula, got my glue. I need, I'm gonna use a mallet because remember, this is gonna go together and the outside the tails are going to remain proud of the pins. So we don't have to worry about working around all of those bits and pieces. So I'm gonna use a rubber mallet on this. We'll start with part of it and assemble it in the, in the uh, vise. 
and then the last part of it will be done up on the bench. So I want something to protect my bench. That's long enough. All right, let's go. The groove helps keep things oriented so you know where everything should be. Doesn't matter which corner, but there is, a, there is an assembly process. Let me explain that real quick before we get into the, into the actual gluing. So we put together any one corner. However, we have to make sure that the last thing we do is we bring two tails onto the pins. If you were to put it together like this, and now you're gonna to try to squeeze a pin board in there, well then you gotta stress these joints by pulling that apart. That's not good. So either step joint number one, joint number two, and then three and four go together essentially at the same time. So we'll start in this corner. I'm gonna apply glue on all of the long grain surfaces. Don't apply too much, don't apply too little. You don't want it running all over the place, but you don't want it starved either. I find this little applicator is just perfect because I can put it right here instead of having a piece of wood with a puddle of glue in it that starts to skin over on me. The spatula, instead of a brush, allows you to very neatly place the glue exactly where you want it. Brush, you tend to get it all over the surrounding area, then you've got to deal with it after the fact. And usually what I can do is just go in there and push the spatula against the side of the tail and that will smear the glue everywhere I want it. Not on that back wall because it's an end grain tail that's going to go against it. Out here. Now you may also want to have some clamps handy in case you have to pull something together. I prefer it such that friction alone will hold the joint together. Clamp sometimes introduces pressure that may throw things out of square, but sometimes you need it. Now I do put a little bit of glue on those outside surface, along in grain surfaces. Don't know why, I just do it. Set this in place first by hand so that you don't, you're not forcing it somewhere where it's not meant to go. Now I have a gap up here and I don't know how or where that came from. And I'll deal with that when I get a little farther into this. Should have had a square handy. It's got to be pulled down into position. A little more. I don't want to overdo it. Which I just did. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to do this next one this way. It allows you to pound the pin board, the back, down into this, which as long as you're beating on, the, on those with a mallet, you're okay. If you're using anything solid, you're going to want to put a block on top of that to protect it. Remember that this is the top. Start it by hand so it's properly lined up. I can set my square in there. Just pound that down until that seats. Now I want to grab a hammer because that doesn't feel like it's going together the way it should. better. Sometimes a mallet just doesn't deliver the oomph that you need and that looks good and square. 
Okay, this one we've got to put two together at the same time, so we've got to be a little bit quicker. You don't want that glue to start skinning over on you before you get it assembled. Not too much on that bottom one because you don't want it getting into the groove and making it difficult to get the drawer bottom in place. Okay, start it by hand first. Now if things went right, it should be lined up perfectly back here. If it is, then you're pretty much guaranteed it's going to be nice and square. If you're having to twist it one way or the other, try to pull it into alignment, you've probably lost your fit. Not a fun feeling. Now, just throw a cloth over that just so that the glue doesn't splatter all over. Check back here. Make sure that has seated. Just give it another little tap. Just to let it know what I think. Now, when I used my Kerfex 10 up here, I caused a little split on there. I went I one chop too many. So that's gonna require a clamp to pull that tight. And hopefully that will be all it requires. Now why we have a little gap up there, I don't know, but I think it's the only one. Now, final step, I'm gonna go over to my jointer fence, uh, pardon me, jointer table. Make sure it's nice and clean. Set that on there. I don't need to have the front touch, I just want the sides. And I want to make sure I don't have any, no, this is, a, this is a beautiful sign. If that does not rock, then you know everything is nice and straight and square. Last thing I'll do is check my diagonals. I can't do that one, so I'll go from the inside here. So that reads just shy of 19 and 3 sixteenths. And this one is in the exact same spot. So... Good news, everything is nice and square. Now, okay, now the last thing I wanna do, just while the glue is dry, or wet, sorry, see if I can pull that in, if it's a matter of, well, it is closing. You see a little bit of squeeze out right there. And it may have been just a little bit of pressure. I don't know what it was, that my, I should have checked it, I didn't, I don't normally do that, so. If there was a little bit of slope, this way, on that pin cut, then it causes that outside pin to spread out like that. And by just putting a little bit of pressure, I squeeze it in. Whether or not it'll hold, we'll have to see. If not, we may have to fix that. Now I'd let that sit. Everything is nice and tight. These, these joints at the front, the ones I talked about that you see as soon as you open, are closed, that's good. Everything is good back there. We didn't, this didn't drop down into our groove, so we won't have any problem getting the bottom in. They line up on both corners, the groove on the front, along with the grooves on the side. So, so far so good. With the exception of a little design change that we had to do because of a small issue with where we put the drawer bottom, that went as planned. Now I prefer to let this sit and dry for at least a day, maybe even a little bit longer. Make sure wherever you set it, there's no stress on, no, there's no stress on it. So you want it to be sitting nice and flat now, part three, we're going to go in, we're gonna install the, well actually before we install the bottom, we will actually fit this to the opening, which means planing the sides. It's a fair bit of close work. And then the last thing we'll do is make the drawer bottom fit and install that. And then we'll have a perfect drawer. See you next episode. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. Now I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the icon with the plane and the chisel, it'll take you to our website, introduce you to all of our tools that we actually manufacture right here, as well as our workshops, both in person and online. Good luck.